Wes Cricket from the Coat Hangers, and you're listening to Drop the Mic. For Christ's sake, who are you protecting? It's all over. Finney, Dexter's going down. I know about Veronica's lawsuit. I know Dexter was facing ruin. I even know he switched daughters, which, for God's sake, actually did work for a while till last week. Yeah, what happened then? He had to kill her, huh? Harry, we put hey. a sock in it? I just want to ask a question. No, I'm I'm asking, yeah, if you ask a question, then it seems like we don't know anything. Like, we're fishing. Okay, okay. Before the record, it was the boyfriend. The guy who flew in from Paris. He would have spotted the fake and said, that's not Veronica. Okay? Am I right? Fuck you. Oh, exactly. Right. So Dexter had Veronica killed, threw a dress on her, dumped the body, and walked away clean. Except for one little thing. Underpants. One tiny little pair of undies. <laughs> I think that's funny, huh? I'm gonna break your nose now. Okay. Oh. I want you to picture a bullet inside your head. Can you do that for me? Fuck you. Anyway, that's ambiguous. Ambiguous? No, I don't think so. No, I think it means that when you say picture it inside your head, okay, is that a bullet will be inside your head or picture it in your head? Like Harry, you shut up? He's got Look, a point. I don't know anything about a girl, seriously. I was bluffing. You know what? I think that you are bluffing right now. Harry, what are you doing? Well, what I'm doing for the guy who likes to bluff is I'm playing a little game called Am I Bluffing? Huh? Where is she? Where the fuck is Harmony? Harry. You want to play hardball? I can do that. Where is... The girl! What did you just do? Just I put in one bullet, didn't I? I you put, put a live round in that gun. Oh, yeah, there was like an 8% chance. Eight percent. Was it just 8? 8? Yeah. Who taught you math? math? All right, welcome back to our San Diego podcast. <laughs> I'm the Swan, your host for this special holiday episode. And in the studio tonight, we have the long-awaited return of our local projectionist, Mr. Chris Pollock. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. It's been a while since I've been on the air. It's been definitely long overdue, right? Yeah. But, um, so tonight we're chatting about Shane Black's uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yes. And this is episode 145, You'll Never Die in This Town Again. That is a (laughs) great title. Fitting, I would say. Uh, before we dig in this darkly comedic modern noir piece, let's talk some uh, pop culture news, right? All right. And now for a special news report. Brought to you by Drop the Mic. All right, so obviously James and Diego aren't with us tonight. So James sent over uh, some of his news, and that's all we're going to be uh, talking about for news. Just yep. this segment, so we can kind of dive into everything fast when we get to the movie. Yeah. Um, so starting off, Keanu Reeves has begun weapons training for John Wick Chapter 4 and The Matrix 4 at the same time. Did I? Maybe you guys covered it. They were supposed to release those on the same day, Yeah, right? so he's competing with himself, essentially. Someone's going to back off. My, my guess is probably Warner Brothers mm-hmm. with The Matrix. I think they're going to back off and change that. You think so? I think so. I think John Wick, at this point in time, is uh, the much more popular... And more lucrative franchise. Yeah, because it's relevant. Yeah. For one. So I think Warner Brothers will eventually back off of that date and choose another one. Nice. Um, the, the sequel to The Hitman's Bodyguard has a set uh, release date for August 28th, 2020. Have you heard about, uh, what's it called? Uh, Six Underground? Yes, the Michael Bay <laughs> movie on Netflix. Yeah. I heard it's very Michael Bay. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> I watched like the beginning chase scene, and holy shit, it's just like anxiety <laughs> all over the place. Like, oh, so choppy and weird. Yeah. And like the tight angled action. I don't. It was. It's just nuts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on, Ezra Miller's Flash movie gets an official release date for July first, twenty twenty two. Likely to start production as soon as Fantastic Beast 3 wraps their production. Um, Shazam's sequel is hitting theaters with a release date of April 1st, 2022. And then capping off our news bit, Christopher Nolan's new film, Tenet. Uh, there's a new trailer. That trailer was awesome. Featuring Robert Pattinson and uh, John, John David, David Washington. Washington. Oh, yeah gonna be nuts yeah i'm excited that's that's something i'm looking forward to next year yeah anything else to add to the uh news bit i don't have anything i not too much get a chance to look up uh some news it's all right 
<laughs> All right, let's move on to weekly recs. Okay. And now it's time for the weekly recommendations. All right, do you have any recs for us? Uh, well, we're recording this on Saturday. Mm -hmm. This is your Christmas episode, but we're actually speaking to each other on Saturday. Uh, so by the time... You the know, 20, this, 21st? 21st, okay. the winter solstice. Yet again, we recorded <laughs> Die Hard on the winter solstice last year. That doesn't seem that long ago. It's pretty <laughs> weird how long... How time's flying by now that was a year ago now i'm just a year older oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but uh it will be airing tomorrow night so if you have a chance to catch this do so the finale of mr robot is airing on sunday the 22nd so if you're a mr robot fan hopefully you're gonna dig it because this season has been excellent and if not uh, go back and check it out definitely I think it's available on Amazon right now. It's a great show. Uh, and another thing on Amazon that I want to wreck is The Expanse, which I just started the fourth season last night, and I'm really digging that. Uh, if anyone's into really, really good sci-fi, very, for the most part, realistic sci-fi, mm -hmm. uh, The Expanse. I, I can't recommend that show enough. I'm glad that after sci-fi dumped it, after the end of the third season, I'm glad Amazon snatched it up. And I, th I think they have more money to do uh, what they can do in those first couple episodes I watched were fantastic. They're spectacular. That's pretty crazy. Um, on For our Rogue One episode, which is technically still our current one, The other, my other buddy Chris also recommended The Expanse. Oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a good show. It's a good show. It's been one of my favorites. For sure. Well, uh, for this one, <clears throat> since the only big movie I think that's come out since we've done this is Star Wars, right? Star Wars came out yesterday. Yeah, I got to see it uh, today, and I thought it was it was brilliant, man. It's a great cap off to that to that saga. And uh, if you don't agree, then uh, tell me why. <laughs> yeah, <well, laughs> you know, I'm watching it tomorrow. Obviously, obviously, I'm not going to give any uh, spoilers or anything, so yes. don't worry, guys. Um, yeah, you guys should check out Star Wars The Rise of the Skywalker. And let me recommend that if Star Wars is sold out, that you go down the hall and watch Knives Out, because that's that's been a, a lot of fun. That was one of my favorite movies this season. Nice. I'd, I'm definitely going to check that out before we do our best of episode. Yes, watch it. I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about it. I love it. Nice. Was it uh, Ryan Johnson, right? Yep. Awesome. Um, before we get into our main focus, we wanted to do the the boomstick berry. Right? <laughs> well, I take a sip of my <laughs> boomstick berry soda that you got me. Where Hollywood Horror Nights? No, it was uh, the Evil Dead um, exhibit at the Mystic Museum in uh, was uh, Los Angeles or Burbank to be more specific. They have a immersive uh, Evil Dead mm -hmm. exhibit with real props and replicas from the various the all all of the movies actually even the new the the reboot yeah they had the book and everything it's pretty nuts dude I really uh, I really enjoyed that and I wanted to bring you back something <laughs> from there that was pretty cool it was brewed whatever created specifically for that event cool yeah. what is it what does it taste like it tastes pretty good <laughs> did you want a sip yeah I'll I'll taste yeah it. take a sip. I don't know if you want the glass or the bottle, but Which, mm, take it. It's good. You brought that back for me, and I said, uh, "Oh yeah, not yet." I said, uh, "Save that. And I'll drink that on the air the next time I'm on the show." It definitely tastes like uh, craft blue Jones. Yeah, for sure. If I'd have to chalk it up to a to com a comparison, tastes like a, a blue raspberry Slurpee that's that's melted. Definitely. I wasn't, yeah, that's not disappointing. That's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, moving on. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. And now for the movie focus of the week. All right, this week we're talking about Chris's uh, special 
Christmas movie. My Christmas movie. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, an unorthodox Christmas movie. Yes, although not not as overtly Christmas as, uh, you know, like Die Hard that we did last year. I feel like this one is um, Christmassy in the way that The Nice Guys is, mm -hmm. obviously, because it's Shane Black, and he likes to set his stories around that time because he's obsessed with the holiday, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, it's a. I would say it's a Christmas movie nonetheless. It There's is. There's a lot of props and stuff. It is. It still takes place <laughs> at Christmas, and uh, Michelle Monaghan, who plays Harmony, at a couple points in the movie is dressed up as Santa's elf, or <laughs> she's in a, a Santa costume because she works a party as um, as a hostess. Yeah. But it's this like like we we spoke about Shane Black. Last fall, when we did the last kiss goodnight, mm -hmm. or the long kiss goodnight, excuse mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, and I would recommend if anyone hasn't heard that episode to go back and listen to that because that was one of the the times I had, or that was where I had most fun on air. Uh, and that was a movie that I really enjoy, and you and James hadn't seen it, so it was kind of cool introducing you guys to that movie because I think that movie is very underrated. Yeah. Especially mm -hmm. as a, as an action movie, it's uh it's streaming. I noticed it's streaming the other night uh, on Netflix. Yeah, I think it's on Netflix right now. Yeah. So yeah. if you guys want to watch the movie first and then go back and listen to our episode, that's that's another good alternative Christmas movie. Definitely. Yeah. Obviously, like you just mentioned, Shane Black. Keep in mind these are adult films, so if you don't yeah. like, <laughs> don't watch them with the kids. So. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's rated R. It's from 2005. It's a mystery crime noir. It runs at one hour and 43 minutes and it's got an 85 on Rotten. A thief posing as an actor finds himself caught in the crossfire of a mysterious murder. With his back up against the wall, he teams up with a witty private eye and actress from his past. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I gotta say though, I don't like that trailer. No? I think that trailer's kind of bad, and I think it gives away some of the best gags. Now, obviously, we were just listening to it, not seeing it, but when I watched it the other day, I was like, oh, it, it gives away some of the some of the funniest bits in the movie. It does. Perhaps, I know it didn't make all that much money, right? No, it did not. It was... 15 million or yeah, something was, like that? Yeah, it was a very low-grossing movie. How much did it take to make? Do you remember? I think it barely made its budget back. Yeah. Uh... I think it only made less than five here. I think it made more um, more money overseas. Okay. And from what I understand, it barely made the 15 mil back. It's interesting because the there's a big cast here, essentially for the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, but well, <laughs> let's let's get into some of the production stuff. Yeah. We spoke about Shane Black last last fall, but for those who might not remember or who may have not heard that show, uh, mainly he was a screenwriter mm -hmm. for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote Lethal Weapon, which the trailer points out. Wrote the uh, Last Boy Scout, both of which take place at Christmas time. The Long Kiss Goodnight, which we spoke about at Christmas time, and he got paid I think four million for the Long Kiss Goodnight. That movie didn't do as well. We got into that uh, last year. Mm -hmm. um, and then he just kind of took a break from Hollywood and uh, was doing, was still writing, but he wasn't writing anything that was getting produced. Uh, kind of wanted to do something totally different. I mean, he was an action guy and he wanted to do a romantic comedy and then couldn't get that off the ground. So he he kind of switches gears and says, "Hey, I want to write a, a noir film, but kind of with a, a comedic a comedic bent to it." So he he kind of wants to do like a, a noir from the '50s or '60s, mm -hmm. but updated for this time period, but also uh, have a, a, a comedic uh, angle to it. I think. Yeah, it's very like tongue in cheek, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I read somewhere that he wanted to do. Ooh, excuse me, that soda. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. The uh, I think he wanted to do something like he 
He said, what if Jack Nicholson from As Good As It Gets